Oh. I guess we can roll. Right? <laughs> Let's go. Alrighty. Yo, 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 what's going on? Welcome to the Living for a Living podcast. I'm uh, very excited today. Yes, sir. Got my first guest ever. One, uh, one of my good friends back from the day. We, we played in the state championship in high school against each other. Probably one of the most dominating high school athletes I've ever seen. Appreciate Truly a, a hometown, a hometown talent growing up as he played at Skyline High School, University of Washington, and then played a couple seasons for the Seahawks as well. So staying in the Pacific Northwest. Yep, yep. Got my homie Casey Williams. What's man, up, bro? I'm the first guest, man. This is an <laughs> honor, bro. I, I I feel honored to be here, man. I appreciate the intro too. That hey, was cool. That I appreciate cool. it, bro. Like I we. Casey and I have been throwing routes and kind of just bullshitting off camera a little yeah, bit lately. Yep, yep. And we kept talking and saying like, bro, let's get on a podcast. And so, yeah, I was just explaining before that your enthusiasm for wanting to do this has been like a big, I was already motivated, but like an extra added motivation. Cause, yeah. Dude, it's, it's nerve wracking. Yeah. Like wanting to do this for the first time with, with somebody yeah. i've been just talking to myself lately <laughs> with a camera and a mic so it's all good <laughs> that's funny and, uh, but to get someone who's like stoked on it as much as i am and i was like yeah you know i'm only here for two weeks in case it's oh well after you leave i got a mic too so we could do it then yeah, i was yeah, like yeah. oh he's about it let's go <laughs> i'm real about it i mean i listen to podcasts all the time like um i think you asked me the question of like what music you listening to and i was just like i mean honestly bro like <laughs> i listen to more podcasts than i do anything else um and uh i'm just thinking about the events that led to this moment and uh me on ig just like yo i need a quarterback like who trying to throw and joey hit me <laughs> up and here we are and the vibe was so so heavy as soon as we uh, the first session that we threw we were barely running routes it was almost like we were just talking in between <laughs> each route like I wasn't even tired like it was but it was good though because you realize um what more people have to offer than just the field like the field brings people together it connects us um but there's so much more uh that we have of value you know totally yeah, yeah. no I was I was tripping out that we threw yeah first time like last week and <laughs> <laughs> what down and back we'd hit it and then some topic something yeah, would, some come, would up, come up and we'd start talking <laughs> and okay yeah what what route are we running again yeah yeah oh, okay yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay you know like getting that you know work on the field and off the field yeah. i think you know was we both vibe with the major kind of mindset that you know worrying about our mentality and and like things going on in our head and also just like obviously sports is a big part of our lives yeah and continues to be but that's just a fac facet of life. You know, yeah. it's not, it's not who we all are. And, you know, I think as social media progresses, like right now, everyone's starting to realize like, oh shit, they do more than just dribble a basketball or yeah. catch a football or, yeah. you know, whatever. And so it's like a cool way to get into someone's mindset. You yeah. know, that's, that's the big reason I'm doing this podcast right here is just like, you know, obviously I want to, I got some stuff some questions athletically that I've probably always wanted yeah, to ask you that like it. I haven't really figured out a way to and so yeah. it gives me an excuse to do that but then on the flip side like like I want to hear about the music and yeah. you know what's going on with the fam you know like yeah. all that other stuff that's just as just as important and just as cool really as catching touchdowns yeah you know but it's it's those other things and so um like I said I kind of got it scripted out right now but mm. something you said this morning while we were throwing that I want to get into like while it's fresh and I think it kind of plays really well as you said this weekend you were yeah. visiting with Dr. Bob yeah and so I, if you don't I, know who Dr. Bob is you're missing out yeah no, I'm gonna tell you that right now this this man is uh one of the best healers that um I've ever been around and uh it's all natural stuff um, it's just, it's just, a, uh, as soon as you walk into his office, you get this different vibe of energy that just hits you and you're just like, yo, this is where I need to be right now. <laughs> okay. Um, and, uh, I first went to Dr. Bob, uh, I was referred to him by Michael Harvingson. I don't know, okay, you know yeah, who that yeah, is. Yeah, from Bothell, right? Bothell, yep, yeah, yep. some Kinko okay. in here. Uh, <laughs> I was referred to him, uh, by Michael Harvingson. I was just coming off injury uh, in 2013, uh, and, um, I had my surgery and like that week I went straight to Dr. Bob and the rehab process was 
way easier than I ever thought it would be um, because of him. And ever since I was I went to him, he has started talking about these seminars and I'm just like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm trying to do a seminar. What's up? He's like, hey, cat, you know, he always says, cat, hey, cat, relax. You're not ready for it yet. You're not ready. And uh, I finally got that opportunity this weekend. And uh, I'm in another dimension right now. <laughs> That's awesome, man. No, I mean, <laughs> ah! you, you said that this morning in uh, one of the other podcasts that I've been following recently. I'm actually going to be on it later this week. The Flow Station podcast yep. I was telling you about is he was just the guest on there. I think they just posted it or maybe just posted only the clips. I'm not positive. But. And so as soon as you said that, you know, it's just the, the universe aligning. You know yeah, what I mean? it, it, it just so keeps, it keeps you, lining up. When you said that, I was like, oh, damn. Yeah. Like, this is all, you know, because I've heard, I mean, all the, the Washington Hoopers and Jamal Crawford shouted him out yep. in, in, in interviews and stuff. And yep. so I've known who he is without knowing who he is. And yeah. so, like, um, I mean, I know it's probably difficult to explain some of this, but what's, like, an example? What's something you guys did this weekend that, like, you know, I, I know it's kind of tough for like, what, uh, what, yeah, any- it's it's hard to explain because the way you get the best the way you get the best experiences uh, out of these situations is by experiencing it yourself. Um, people oftentimes and this is one of the things we actually talked about this weekend is people people often think about like an expectation you know they want to go into Mm -hmm. this and have an expectation and want to feel a certain way when they're done or they hear about what's going to happen and then they're like okay this is how it's going to happen for me um like for example uh there was three other people it was me and three other people so four in total and this one girl uh went first in the session um and she just had an experience that was very unique to her uh personal experiences that she's had in her life things that she had to get over, um, things that were holding her back, that were weighing her down. Um, And I was watching her experience this, and I'm like, okay, um, we're about to get into some, like, like deep traumatic type stuff. Um, And then my experience was completely different than hers. And uh, you just have to eliminate expectation because your experience is going to be so unique to what you need because everybody's different we're all unique we're not the same humans like your experience is not going to be the same as someone else's and uh we really just we're just hitting pressure points and deep breathing into those pressure points um and and getting something out of it and Damn. that's that's really where uh where i can where okay. i can say kind of where i want to leave it too because i want people to feel like they're missing out on something. Yeah, no, you, know? you, you got me like itching right <laughs> yeah, now. But yeah, that's up exactly Dr. what Bob I want you to feel. As soon as this ends. No, I mean, dude, that brings up like a good point. The whole eliminating expectations thing. Like yeah. I, I got into a, or I, I think I tend to have that problem where I kind of build an expectation of whatever. And a big th- reason I ended up leaving in Finland this year was because of that whole situation. Or, I mean, there was a lot to the situation. Yeah. But ultimately... I'd built up this expectation in my head that it was going to be like super professional and this way and that way. Mm -hmm. And we're going to live in a nice spot and, you know, based off past uh, experiences. But then I got to Finland and fucking nothing was how I expected. Yeah. Yeah. And that like, it was bad. It chipped your mind up too. It fucked me up secondly, because it wasn't one. It wasn't very good. It wasn't a great situation. And then two, it wasn't at all how I expected it to be. Yeah. So this not great situation turned into a horrible situation yep. because of that. Yeah. And so, okay. Uh, the, the time where I really got challenged with that was um, my third year in Seattle. Okay. Yeah. Uh, after preseason, I balled out during preseason, one of the best receivers um, in the league as far as production goes. Yeah. You, um, you let, if I'm not wrong, you led the NFL in preseason yeah. receiving that. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, let him, let him receive. I, I looked uh, up a couple stats. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate <laughs> Appreciation. Um, but, yeah, man, uh, and the expectation was that I was going to make the team. Um, and that didn't happen, so that screwed my mind up. And then, you know, 24 hours later, Cleveland calls. Mm. And the expectation there was – man, I'm going to go in. I'm going to turn this program around. They want me – they they picked me up first out of the draft board. So what yeah. happens when all the guys get cut, um, whatever the draft order was, 
that draft order order carries over to the preseason. Um, and when there's everybody gets cut, Cleveland, who had the first pick in the draft, they get the first pick from the list of oh, guys. Oh, from like waivers, essentially? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. so they picked me up first, and I'm like, okay, they picked me up first. Like, they really want me to come in and do and, and, and make a change. Um, and uh, that really wasn't the case. <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't the case at no, all. No. Uh, they they brought me in. Uh, I was playing a lot of backup, which was fine. Uh, the starter goes down. Corey Coleman goes down with a broken finger, and then I actually get my opportunity to play. Um, and I'm leading the league. I'm leading not the league. But I'm leading the team yeah. uh, in receptions and catches. Uh, that's the same thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <And> yards, <too. laughs> uh, yeah, and yards. And they uh, and they and they cut me, and they end up putting me on practice squad. But the the point to the story was. Um, I had built an expectation in my head to come in and really make a change. And when outside forces don't allow you to do that, um, it's difficult to still play your game. Totally. You know, and that's something that I kind of got stuck with. Also, um, being in Cleveland, man, that's just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can't have an expectation over there. You just got to go and live and just, just post up in the hotel and do what you got to do because it's, it's tough. It's I, tough. I bet. And I, I was, I kind of, I had this in my notes as like a question to ask later, but since we're on the subject is, and we kind of alluded to it when we were throwing the other day about like what, what some of the, like a different, I'm sure there was a lot of differences, but going from the Hawks yeah. That had, you know, back to back Super Bowls, yeah. like I- incredible winning culture yep. to the Browns who, you know, are the Brown they're turning it around now, but at the time they were the Browns and that year yep. they went 0 sixteen, yep. right? And yep. so what were the the major shifts, you know, for you to do that? Yeah. You know? So um kind of going back real quick, just made me think <laughs> of this. Uh expectations, man. I wanted yeah. to win some games. Right. <laughs> but right. we didn't. We didn't win any. Um but uh and that and that kind of it flusters the locker room, man. It was something weird to see. Like week 11, 12, uh, we're 0 and 12. And as soon as one thing goes bad, everybody's just like, oh, well, you know, another game, another game down. Uh, step closer to the end of the season. Uh, my check's still coming in the mail, right? You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? You yeah. still got me every two weeks. All right, we good, you know? But the I think the biggest difference was Pete Carroll created – a culture where they expect to win right um they res- they respect uh pete and uh, they they want to they they believe in themselves when we were over in cleveland it's weird because the I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and say that the talent was a lot lower like right. sure yeah, it's you, the nfl it's the nfl exactly <laughs> yeah. like i'm looking around and i'm like yo we got some dudes in here we're going to be all right, yeah. you know, like, and I think the previous year they had won one game or two games. I okay. can't remember, but everybody was excited to turn the program around and they were four and zero after preseason. So they were, they had some juice. Okay. Um, and, uh, I don't know. I, I just coming off of the seminar, man, I kind of want to <laughs> just say, it's just, a, it's just bad energy. It's just bad vibes right. in there. Okay. Um, you got a, a lot of guys that are motivated, but there's so much history of, of negativity that it's hard to uh, overcome that, um, especially when you want to do good and you want to be great. But it almost seems like old forces just don't allow you to do so because we were we were in games. It's not like right. we were getting blown out. Totally, like yeah. we were losing games that were close, yeah. um, one score games, and they just at the end of the day they just didn't fall our way. Whether it be um, bad refing, whether it be uh, we're in the red zone three, four times and can't convert, or we're missing field goals, or we're just just weird stuff, yeah. man. So. Yeah. Just finding ways to lose, baby. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah. really, just finding ways to lose, and it, it it was uh, it was necessary for me to go to because I've been in winning programs my whole life. You know what I mean? I I went to Skyline where we were in the state championship every single year. Right. Um, lost my senior year, but uh, oh, you did? Yeah, we lost to Ferris my senior year. Oh, that's yeah, right. yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um. And uh, <laughs> a little hate for the Issy side, a little hate for the Issy side. <laughs> That's funny, but yeah, man, uh, it was a winning coach. I mean, Isco had a winning culture too. Yeah, like totally. you, you guys were playoffs every single year, semifinals, like quarterfinals. Yeah. You were in there. Yeah. Um, and then go to U Dub where uh, we weren't like winning Pac-12 championships, but you know we're eight and five or uh, seven and five, whatever, yeah. uh, winning yeah. games and. Uh, 
then going to Seattle where once again it's a winning culture it felt normal to me it was it was something that was easy for me to be a part of because I was motivated and I wanted to win just like they wanted to win and they showed that every day at practice right um it was in Cleveland man it was like first couple of weeks yeah all those vibes were the same sure you know you you lose the first two or three games whatever it's nothing we still got a lot more games to play and we can and we can pull this thing out and turn this thing around um but once it just continues to happen, you start to just see body language go down, um, people just not wanting to be there. Uh, and it it's just, I don't know, man, it, w- it was definitely different. But I'm glad I went through it just so I can see what it's like to be on that other side and uh, figure out how you and actually not really figure out, but more just compare and contrast. man. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. really what it is. And yeah, to know, I mean. It, it intrigues me too because like we said is it's still both sides have the same salary cap yep both sides got dudes first round second round undrafted you know mm-hmm. like the works mm-hmm. but then the the differences you know in the league it, it shows that there's a, a i mean the patriots to me are the the perfect example of that the, yeah it don't matter who's going in you know they're just doing their their thing and yeah. that's the culture and the mindset that the guy at the top's you know Put yeah, out there. yeah, and that's the thing that makes me that I started to think about was if you picked up that roster in Cleveland and you flip flopped Seattle and Cleveland's roster and you gave Cleveland's roster to Pete, I mean, we're in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's a that's <laughs> we're, a cool. We're yeah. in the playoffs, and Dang. I and I promise you. Now I don't know what the Seattle roster is doing over there. Yeah, but I know that that Cleveland roster with Pete Carroll is in the playoffs for sure. That's interesting. Um, and it and it uh it it's interesting because I don't know if I would have thought of that before mm. because now you know I'm I'm doing this personal training stuff. I'm working with the kids, and I'm seeing the value that coaches have on a on a on a player on a on a team. And uh, it's crazy, man. It's crazy that, like, because, you know, as a player, you're like, all right, coach, just give me the play. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. We'll go out there and execute. Yeah. Just give me the play. We'll be all right. Um, but now it's like, nah, there, there's an energy that's, like you said, that starts at the top and it trickles down through everybody else. And uh, I don't know what he was doing in his personal life. I don't know <laughs> uh, how much effort he really put towards the team. When he was in there, he gives great speeches. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know if he respected his coaching staff. I I don't You're talking know. About in Cleveland. Yeah, no, in Cleveland. Okay, okay. Yeah, who yeah, was yeah. the head guy? Hugh there? Hugh Jackson. Okay, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So yeah, I don't I don't know how much how much he was doing outside of the game uh, to pour into his players. Right. Uh, but I know Pete was. Right. I know Pete was pouring into his players and and trying to make. Uh, everybody feel like they're at home, trying to get the best out of all of his players. And it was personal. I used to go in Pete's office uh, once a week, Damn. talking about leadership, talking about how I can how I can uh, be the best version of me. And it was on me. Like, I was the one that was like, you know what, I'm going to go to Pete and, and oh, say what's okay. up. And when I asked him, first I was a little nervous because I was like, you know, he's the head coach. He got a lot the things he needs to do yeah. but when I asked him he's like yeah man come on up like it's nothing come on up and come chop it up with me and we'll and, and whatever you want to talk about we'll talk about it he's telling me stories from the SC days <laughs> like he was breaking stuff down man and it really helped me out but it really showed me that he truly genuinely cared cared yeah, yeah. no and man that's like football life at, like we all just want to be cared about yeah you know yeah. like it, that sounds softer but man I, I can specific man I just I wish someone cared, you know, and and like now, as I say that, I realize a big thing about being so excited or you being so excited about this was like, shit, he cares about this, you know, like, you know, it's like anything you're starting out and you're telling, you know, whether it's, I'm sure music and the video podcasting world now that I'm doing is like, you know, a lot of people end up starting it. It's just, no one really finishes it through. So you first, you know, I'm telling people, oh yeah, I want to do a podcast and you kind of get the look of like. So, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. so, and then that like, makes you be like, like wait, damn, should I do a do podcast? I, I is this know. important? <laughs> yeah, do, do people, you know, and yeah. so it's like it, it was important to me, but now, yeah, is it, you know, so yeah, oh, that's a, I mean, and I want to go back yeah. to the seminar okay. because okay. in the seminar, uh, one of the things that I really honed in on, and this is a personal experience, uh, was I am the source, you know what I mean, like. I'm the source of my own energy. I I have a, a field of energy around me that is protected. 
And when I have a thought, when I have an idea, when I have something that I want to do, yes, you're going to tell people, yes, your goal, especially in the creative field, podcasts, videos, yeah. whatever, um, people, are, other people are going to be involved. And you need other people's, not acceptance, but, you know, you need some views, you need some likes, you know, you're trying to get somewhere <laughs> yeah. with it. So you have to, you want people to like your stuff. And it's tough when you're starting out and someone looks at you like, bro, you doing a podcast? It's like, no, I need your I need your interest. Like, you don't understand. Yeah. I need you to listen. Yeah. Um, but when people look at you like that, it's just like, man, all right, if you don't if you don't if you think that I'm not gonna go nowhere with it, that's what you think. Yep. I yep. am the source. You totally. know what I mean? Like I'm going to create my own energy and create a movement. Uh, that I want to see because at the end of the day you're gonna look back on this when like we were talking about on the field we're gonna look back when we're 40 years old 50 years old if it doesn't work so be it like we got a lot of stuff that we can just look back on and have fun and enjoy and laugh at it but if it does work then damn those people that said that they don't even want to be a part of it now they tune in every (laughs) week no (laughs) that's tune in every week yeah like yeah that's what I always use as the excuse like shit at the very least like when we're 50, 60, whatever, look back like, hey, remember when we were just talking? You yeah, know, like, look yeah, what we did, you yeah. know, like, that, that's at the very least, you know? And yeah. so to me, you know, the more I'll talk about it, it's like, my problem is I, I'll almost get too in, into my own head mm-hmm. with it. And then you said a, a great thing about like, you need people yeah. around you, whether it be views, whether it be, you know, someone helping you edit or you know produce for music or you know or just an inspirer like inspire whatever support whatever the creative endeavor is yeah like you need someone around and so like um this is like self-therapy is like i know like i'll get into like my little rut or you know and get out of a creative mindset sometimes if like I just isolate myself, yep. you know, and, it, and it's, it's easy to do that. Yep. Sometimes I'm, I know like you're back in the hometown living at home right now. And like, dude, I, I know how it can be with that. And yeah. so like, but that's an interesting kind of thing that is, we need people. Yeah. Isolation is scary, man. It, is. it really is because, um, you start to think about what other people think about. And you're not even asking them what they think about. you creating it in your own head. You're like, damn, they probably think about this about me. Or they probably thinking this. And it's like, you don't even know. You didn't even have the conversation. And what's even worse is not only are you thinking what they're thinking, you're you do it so often, then you start start to think what people know, yeah, you know, or what yeah. people really have accepted as fact about you. Yeah, you know, speaking selfish, you know, mm-hmm. talking about yourself. But yeah, you be you get in your head so much that you've created this little story that like, oh, you know, Kason thinks I'm crazy. Yeah. And meanwhile, we haven't talked in how you know. Let's yeah. go back ten or a couple of weeks. We haven't talked in five. Oh, he thinks I'm. How does it, we don't even yeah. know, you know, like what, what? And you know, know what ends up happening after that? You don't do nothing. You don't do anything. You just yeah. sit on the you, couch, You write man. it off. Yeah, yeah let me just off. get on this Xbox or something, man. <laughs> let me just play these games yeah. and just chill. Like, nah, man, go out and chase something. No. Go out and chase something for real. And uh, I'm just, I'm just, the, this process has been like, when did we throw? We threw last Monday. A week ago. A week ago. Today. Yeah. And here we are. Know. You know what I mean? I and it's just like, if, if man, I don't know. Connect with the right people. Things just happen naturally, man. Things just gravitate to you. If you put that intention out there and then you take advantage of opportunities that come your way. You didn't have to hit me up. For real. I haven't yeah. talked to you since 2012. For real. I know. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what we were. You didn't have we, to say anything. Yeah. And then it was something... And I'm kicking myself, you know, that I didn't because, man, I've been looking just as a from a QB perspective, I've been looking for someone to throw with seriously the last two, three months I've been home. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I forget because, no, I wasn't even following you, bro. I saw Joey had posted something about you. Shouts out to Joey. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Joey Evans on the uh, camp. He he posted something. I was like, shit. Kason's around, yeah, bro. And then yeah. I hit you up that second. Yep, yep. And I was like, whatever. And 
we a minute. Yeah, bro, <laughs> let's go. Let's, let's go. go. I'm always down to throw with the, you know, this yeah. can't go over Dude. here. Like, it was hella funny, man, just reflecting on, uh, that was one of the first conversations that we had was just talking about high school and sports. Like, like us being in the state championship together, man, that's a crazy thing. For those that don't know, man, <laughs> yeah, 2008, it was going down. And we had we had uh, Tacoma Dome packed out. Packed. Yeah, yeah, man. I, I haven't been to a recent one lately, but – in oh, it ain't the same. In my story that I always tell is there's never been a more full Tacoma Dome. It ain't the same, bro. They done pushed the bleachers back. Oh, like, damn. they don't even have the bottom section. And then even they took out the bottom section. And even then, it's not even full in there, bro. Oh, I don't no, know. I don't yeah. know what's going on. I mean, I this. Know. I'm this, not saying we no, were the, the we, best era. We, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying it's different. Ticket sales <laughs> is low. <laughs> yeah, no. For people that don't know what we're talking about, we played state championship in 2008, my yep. senior year, his sophomore year, and they beat us. And, uh, I mean, what? How? in my story that I tell, there were like 9,000 people. Like, there were a lot. I don't know what yeah. Tacoma Dome standards are. Now we're just like totally – patting ourselves on the back <laughs> just right a now bit. but just i'll take it i'll take it but you gonna listen regardless yeah we don't get to flex the high school stuff in a, in a while you know yeah but dude that game and so case and i grew up our high schools are six miles apart yep yep and so the two teams in the state championship for 4a biggest in the state yeah were, did you go to the uh pcfc yeah. The freshman campus? Yeah. 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 So freshman campus, That's you know, right. we're combined at schools. The freshmen are like of Issaquah, the freshman skyline are going to the same school. That's right. Um, like, yeah, man, there was a lot That's of connects. Right. A lot of connects there. Dude, I forgot. Yeah, because bro, in in that eighth, ninth grade year, me and Gino were like boys. Really? Like shouts to Gino. Shouts man. to G. Yeah, yeah. We were boys, bro. Like inseparable, like That's always what's up. kicking it. That's what's and then up. as soon as freshman year football hit. <laughs> I don't know you, bro. bro Who are you, bro? And, and we went to the same high, you know, we're yeah. going to the same school. And yeah. so, I mean, just thinking about the, the again, patting ourselves on the back here, but the amount of talent that was in Issaquah, Sammamish area, yeah. those four, five, six years, a yeah. couple years year by your senior year. Yep couple years before uh, I yeah mean, it was it was uh it was next level and it was uh it was blessed to be a part of something like and that. that's yeah that's really what i love the most um the crazy it's just when people ask me like what my favorite sport was at yeah. that time going into ninth grade going into high school um it was it, they were all at the same level you know football basketball track track i love the individual aspect of the sport um you know i'm high jump long jump triple like all solo events like right. that's that's i love competing just on me you know what i mean uh basketball like anytime i just love how the fans are on top of you like i love the electricity in the building like when a big dunk or hit a three or something of that nature like i just love that you know and basketball is still kind of like the solo team sport yeah in a way, yeah like kinda, you can take yeah, over the game by yeah, yourself exactly you know yeah, what i mean if yeah. you really wanted to uh you drop 40 your team better not be losing mm -hmm. um um, and then football, ultimate team game, uh, but bigger atmosphere. You're outside. You're throwing the pads on. Like, you hitting. <laughs> like, the competition on top of the attention that the fans gave uh, was really what, like, made football true love for me. You okay, know what yeah. I mean? Like, I, it, it's what made it above track and basketball because we were competing every single week. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yep. Yeah, yeah, Skyline had all the accolades. Uh, I think at one point at the highest we were six in the country. Yeah. Um, but everybody wanted to take my, our heads off because yeah. of that, bro. Hey, like, in my story, it's fourth, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were fourth. Yep. We yep. lost to the fourth right yep, national yep, team. <laughs> yeah, fourth. Uh, after 2008, we were fourth. But because of that, everybody's like, yo, like, if we take these dudes down, like, what did that say about us? So For we were real. getting the best of everybody every single week, and the fans came. It was just like – because of those seasons in, in high school, it's like, yeah, man, football is uh, football's over the tie. It's better than the rest of these for sure. Right. Yeah. I mean, and it's – that's – playing over in Europe now, it's always difficult to explain football to people. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. trying to explain – Yeah, like, man, what's that like? They, bro, it's, they just not get it. They dude, just want I mean, to – you say football, they think of the soccer or what? For sure. And then once you say American football, they say, oh, you mean rugby? Uh, and I say like – no. So you third, football yeah, third. Yeah, they I'm, don't even, I mean, like, I'll have people in my own town being like, no, we don't have American football here. We have rugby. It's mm. like, well, 
you have that too. You know? <laughs> but you yeah. have this thing also. Yeah, yeah. But just like explaining to people the fact that like American football or football is just like the ultimate team game. Yeah. You know, and you know, I, I try and explain to people in short that it's basically chess. I've heard other people say this too, but it basically chess with car crashes. You know, mm. like like the strategy used to involve like you're always you need to, and I'm a big chess guy too. And yeah. so like you're always kind of thinking next step ahead. Yeah. There's a you know a a variation of openers kind of strategies you can use to start the game. Yeah. Yeah. And then once it gets into you're thinking okay if he does this I'm going to do this but if he does that I'm going to do this and yeah. all counters and attacks. But then rather than just like taking the piece off the board, it, football is like full on smacking somebody. Yeah. You know? yeah. So it's like that weird like you got to be incredibly smart. To play America, like, that's one thing just people don't understand that, like, the amount of strategy that's behind yeah. at least the top levels, you know? Yeah. And actually, that's perfect, too, because I was going to say, like, you know, is when we're when we've been throwing and this is a question I've been asking, it's like it's super dope to me because you kind of lead it in a way, you know, like, OK, hey, cover three curl, you know, press the you know, this is what I'm thinking versus that I'm going to wait for this and like all that stuff normally when I'm throwing, I'm the guy saying that. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. for me as the cube, like it's fucking super fun to throw with you from that, you know, point of view, yeah. regardless of the fact that you just like kind of put it near you, but like, and it gets caught, you know, but yeah. like what? And so I was kind of thinking this because not a lot of guys I throw with will say that stuff mm. as we're going through it. And, but I haven't thrown with a ton of like dudes who've been in the league like you have And so, like, what percentage of guys do you feel like, did you, have you always kind of been that way? Or for one, I guess let's go self, like, talking about yourself. Have you always been kind of like the student of the game? And, like, I mean, I know Skyline was running some good stuff, and so you had a good, like, foundation from that. Yeah, But, like, how how have you progressed, like, mentally with football being a version of chat you know yeah that kind of thing uh i was smiling earlier because when you're talking about uh you are the one that's explaining to the guys like what what you want from them when we were throwing you were talking about how you had to explain what a three-step slant (laughs) for real i'm like bro who are you throwing with bro (laughs) one two three yeah 45 degree (laughs) angle like who are you throwing with that's just funny yeah shout out to you whoever (laughs) throwing with joey man appreciate you helping him out um but uh man i uh yeah i was blessed to start off in a great system at skyline um obviously you tend to your athletes yeah. as a coach yeah. and uh one of the top qbs in the country so you're gonna throw the ball yeah uh, and we had we had um we, we were skilled all throughout the receiver position so our passing offense was very i don't want to say complicated but we did a lot of reads. Right. Most of the time in high school, you got guys three steps slant. That's, That's what it, it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? First window, if it's not there, <laughs> hit the flat. Yeah. You know? But at Skyline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But at Skyline, it was – we're talking first, second windows. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. We're talking, we're talking scramble drills. That's right. that's something that we're doing at practice. We we have, you know, 60, 70 plays, and we have one play with three different variations off right. of it. If you get this look, uh, we used to have a call. We ha- we used to have a play called Viking, where we would switch release. Okay. Um, and if the and if it was cover three, that corner sinking because we 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 had deep threats. Yeah. Then you sit down and run a comeback. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And for the guy in going uh, from the outside going in. He just have a 15 yard curl, so we're reading things the whole time, and that was I was blessed for that because when we got into UW, yeah, I knew how to make reads. You know what I mean? I knew how to be full speed looking at the safeties. When I get on the line, I'm looking at corner. Okay, he's yeah. uh, he's about five yards off. Safeties uh, two yards outside the hash. We got cover two right here. Yeah, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Um, or one high safety, say the corner's down my or the safety's down my side. He's bu- buzzing out to the flat. I got a curl route. I'm looking to hook up right past that corner. You know what I mean? Or right back past that safety in that window. Um, so it, I've evolved, but 
the foundation was so good right. that it made it easy to evolve. Um, okay, I and I just and now when I'm on the field and another part of it is, you know, I haven't played the game. I was in the last place that I was in was Indianapolis, mm-hmm. uh, got cut in August of 2018. So I haven't played for a year. So when I'm out running routes, I need to I'm visualizing everything. Right. I'm right. seeing a whole defense out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we're not just it's not just three step slant. No, it's press coverage. Uh, this is what we got. Or sometimes I'll say uh, he's pressed up, but it's press bail. They're covered three. They're just disguising it. So I'll come off the line like I'm about to release him. And you know what I mean? Get into my route. Or we're talking basics from yep. the slot. Ten yard, uh, ten yard square in. First window, second window, uh, man coverage. Yeah, like we, sitting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we got to think of all that stuff. You know what I mean? And uh, that's the – because a lot of times you hear about people, you're away from the game for a while, whether it be from injuries or whatever, and it's hard to come back because uh-huh. the game is so fast. But if we're out throwing and I can simulate a game as often as possible every single route, then – when the game comes, it's a lot easier, you right. know, and that's one of the things just going just thinking of my experiences playing with Pete Carroll. Yeah. Every practice is championship. <laughs> Yo. Every single one. So we're out there and it feels like a game. You know, what I mean, I'm, I'm talking right now is every level that I'm at. I'm thinking of the next level. So we're running routes on the field. I'm thinking of a whole team being out there. Right. We're at practice. I'm thinking of game. In the game, I'm thinking of Super Bowl. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm always thinking whatever's next, yeah. you know, just so when that next arrives, it's easy. Yeah. So we can prepare all we want to. Every team prepares. Every single team has practice. Every single team has a fall camp. But how are you – different in those practices is it a championship practice are we practicing preparing for a game or are we just out here because the schedule says practice from 12 to 2 totally you know what i mean totally so yeah yeah, you just you just have to put yourself in those in those uh areas so you can uh you can express your imagination yeah and then what like what percentage of guys that i mean i'd assume i have a feeling like a lot of the dudes in seattle were the same kind of way that but like in your if you had to, how many, I guess, how many dudes in the league are running around, just running around versus, like, have an understanding of what's going on? Like, do you, uh, is, is it, what, yeah. because uh, I know there's, there's some of both, mm-hmm, you know, there's mm-hmm. the, there's the, the story of Jamarcus Russell, like them giving him a blank DVD or VHS, maybe saying, hey, watch these cutups or whatever. Yeah, he came back saying, it. oh, I like all of them. And it was a blank tape, you know, <laughs> like, you know, so I know there are some dudes out there just. <laughs> I've heard that story. That sound like him, though, (laughs) for real. Um, You know who I say is like that? The pure athletes that have got there off pure talent. Right. um, And have always been that way. Yeah. Um, Those guys are just out there running around, you know. Um, But the ones that are Pro Bowl, like L.O.B., Russell Wilson. uh, I wanted to say Marshawn, but I can't. Uh, Marshawn just, he just he's just pure. He's playing, he, he right? Just, yeah. He's just pure. I, but he's still got a high, foot, high yes, football yes, IQ, yes, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. He definitely does. But his, and he prepares too. Yeah, for but, sure. But uh, when it comes to the film study and, <laughs> nah. <laughs> Uh, that's only a few, though. Yeah. Only a few, not a lot. Um, Doug Baldwin, oh, that's uh, what, another that's who one. Kinda yes, into yes, my mind yeah. Big Doug time. Baldwin, best leader I've been around. Um, best example of a leader of what it's supposed to look like. Yeah. Um, you know, quarterbacks are great leaders, natural. But for seeing a receiver as uh, someone in the receiver room being yeah. a leader on the level that he was, um, it really gave me a uh, it gave me a view of what it's supposed to look like. For sure. And his dedication is is next level. He's very smart, um, and it shows on the field. Uh, but, yeah, man, uh, I would say as far as percentages go, because the league is just yeah. full of athletes. But the ones, honestly, the ones that are around longer um, are generally the ones that are more film savvy, the right. ones that are the smarter ones. Um, obviously, you can get away with pure talent for a while, but – Majority, majority of the ones that are playing, you know, six, seven years are the ones who are the smart ones. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, kind of what I assume. But I yeah. just, I know, like, as soon as I asked, I could see the expression of like, yeah, there are some dudes who don't know what the hell. No, nah, no, nah, some They're dudes just, like, just yeah. hey, coach, I'm an athlete, yeah. coach. I'm <laughs> just an throw athlete. it to me. You, <laughs> you know, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. No, or so, the safeties is like, I'm a hey, cover three. All right, I got the whole back half. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I got the whole backfield. Yep. Yeah. 
um cool all right well like a uh, that was a long flow like i said i kind of had a somewhat of a script drawn out but we we covered some few things but kind of maybe get back to that a little bit is i've realized recently that i'm slowly becoming very similar to my parents Mm -hmm. and so i know you grew up in a very athletic background yeah you know dad at uw mom track runner as well sister can ball you know balling and Dude, she just won the championship yeah, too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she just won the championship. Yeah, yeah man. That, the LFL, she going crazy. Bro, those <laughs> girls are no joke either. Yeah, bro. But, uh, like, what was home life for you growing up as, like, a sick athlete in everything? You know, like, what was moms and dad? Like, was yeah. they a pusher? Were they chill? Were yeah. they, you know, yeah, what yeah, was yeah. it kind of like? And then how's that, you know, equated to who you are now? And do you kind of see some similarities that you, like, from – you do some stuff that pops stuff, you know, or. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of similarities. Okay. Uh, my. So one of the things that is that is out there and I don't know why it's out there was that my mom was a track athlete. OK. And she wasn't. Oh, she was. Oh, nah, yeah. That's how nah. I, I, I'm all, always. That's always been in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's all from pops. Like ah, everything okay. from pops as okay. far as the athleticism goes. Right. Uh, mom's a beast in her own right. Uh, yeah. But she uh, first to go to college, first to graduate college, went to UW. OK. Um, uh, just against all odds, made it out of her situation. Uh, she grew up in Portland. Uh, a lot of negativity. Yeah. Um, a lot of uh, outside things affecting the fam okay. um, that she chose not to be a part of. Yeah. Um, and she made it out in her own. But going back to how I was, gr- how I grew up. Uh, going back to how I grew up. Pops, he coached everything. Okay. So. Uh, soccer, ba- basketball, baseball, track wasn't until uh, middle school. But anyway, he coached everything. Okay. But he was extremely laid back. Okay. And that's just his personality in general. But there was no, he didn't push me at all. Like, yeah. it was like, yo, you want to go out and uh, catch some balls? If I said, yeah, we out there. <laughs> yeah. If I said, no, he leave me alone. Okay. You know what I mean? And But I was, oh, I always wanted to. And I think the reason for that is because I knew early in my mind what I wanted to do. Okay. I knew it was sports. Didn't know what one. I knew it was sports. Though. Right. Um, and I wanted to fulfill what my dad had started. Um, so my dad went to UW. Um, he did, uh, he was in a fall camp with, uh, I I forgot what team they were back then. It was like, I don't know. It was one of the teams back then. He just made it to camp, but didn't do anything after that. Didn't make the team, no practice squad or none of that. Uh, and when I, when I heard that story, it was like, okay, I can take it further than that. You know what I mean? And I'm going to take it further than that. Um, so, and I think he knew that too. So we, there was never a push on his end. It was just, yeah, it was just real casual. You want to go out and run routes? I'm, yeah. Yeah. You want to go, you want to go to the gym and and push some shots up? Yeah. And when we were there, we weren't wasting time. You know what I mean? We were there working, but he wasn't like all in my face. Like, yo, we got to do this, do that. Uh, You're not going hard enough. Blah, blah, blah. blah. It was never that. And even during the games, it wasn't like that. The games, he was more there just as like a supervisor, making sure the head coach wasn't (laughs) tripping. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like in football, if I wasn't getting the ball, you know, he'd go whisper to his ear like, hey, Better hand it off to my son and leave it at that and leave it at that. Uh, but me and him, there was never a big push on his end, and I think he knew that I was motivated enough to where I didn't need it. Okay. And I, I truly loved that yeah. because the the love for the game was pure. It was all me, you know right. what I mean. It wasn't from an outside source. It was it was strictly from me and. I'm going to raise my kids the exact same way. You know, if this is what you want to do, if this is the path that you want to take, I'm here to guide you, but I'm not going to control your path. You know, you are going to put in the effort that you want to put in um, and you're going to take it as far as you want to. But you're not going to be I didn't bring you into this world to carry out my right my dream right this is you know what i mean and i'll help yeah i'll help in whatever means necessary but yeah Yeah. and so i guess that's a good question is you know with everything in pop culture with cte and all that stuff like if your kid wants to play football he's playing football or strap it up yeah okay let's go hell yeah put the the pads on like what (laughs) what i I don't even know what that is i know no (laughs) that's what i was like 
I mean, I, I understand it, and obviously, I think Gronk said it recently. Like he's gonna make sure they know all the consequences yeah, this yeah, and that. Yeah. And you know, while while I think there is CTE is a real thing and it has is. effect, but like, I mean, I don't know. Science or st- stats say that like you're more likely to get a concussion playing soccer in high yeah. school than football and so yeah. like yeah no I'm, and, I'm and on the same, same people track. are always people in the education for the game is always getting better too you know sure. like the helmets league is, too yeah helmets the league is doing a lot more work um on how to tackle yeah um taking your head out of it um <laughs> it's funny uh so you were talking about gino simone his little brother jordan yeah, yeah i hated doing the uh the little texas drill with him i hated it because every single time <laughs> he would just put his head down and just run straight at you standing at the ground i'm like yo i can't go with this dude <laughs> he puts his head in my chest every single time and it hurts <laughs> I don't want no smoke, but, uh, but and you yeah. can't do nothing. You can't do nothing. <laughs> it can't do nothing. And, uh, but yeah, the, the, the education on the game is, is forever advancing and no one, and people, cause people love the game. Like For the sure. game's not going anywhere. And if the game's not going anywhere, then we got to learn how to do it right. Yep. And the more that, uh, the education is out there, uh, the better the game's going to be, you know? So I, with my kids, yeah, man, go play, go For have sure. fun, go hit somebody, get you, get that anger out. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? No, I mean, yeah, for me, it's like, you know, as a, I'm going to pray my, my son wants to be a QB, Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, <laughs> taking yeah. a little less hits, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, I understand. but also just the, the, I mean, the way I am now today, I feel like, even though I've said in the beginning that we are separate from whatever sport we play, but to me, like growing up and football for the most part, like for my college experience sucked because like I wasn't playing or I was you know like I had to sit and wait my turn and then kind of get bs by a lot of coaches and you know that kind of different from high school where you were just as soon as you stepped on campus yeah yeah, although yeah I mean my although my high school story is kind of football in general for me is like looking reflectively has been difficult yeah like more seasons I've been unhappy than i have <laughs> at qb it's only fun if you're playing yeah you know? yeah it's, yeah, it's not, yeah there's no three four receiver or four qb offense yeah you yeah know? this is one guy and but for me now like kind of looking at some of those past struggles and stuff like and also different coaching styles that i've gotten from some you know like my high school coach would chew our ass oh yeah he used like, to bark at y'all barking bro and like yeah. but now bro there's nobody who can talk to me crazier than he's ever talked to me you know as mm-hmm. a granted i'm probably not going to let it slide in the same way that i did <laughs> when i was 16 years old but like still to this day like i you know we used to get chewed out at north dakota and other places and people would be like bro what how, you good and i'm like bro if you would have seen my high school coach yeah. like there's no way this, like, ain't, shit. this ain't shit bro yeah, like yeah. i could handle whatever yeah like i knew i messed up before the play even ended in high school because I could hear him yelling at <laughs> yeah, me, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, no, um, <laughs> that's funny. But for me, like, just the the amount of, like, character I've built through football has been a... Do you see yourself getting into coaching when it's all said and done? And if so, what style of coach would you be? Yeah, I mean, so I, you know, it's yes and no is, like, so... Up until maybe a year or two ago, since I've kind of gotten into the video podcast, that kind of world, like I immediately always thought that my next step would be coaching. Right. You know, and and so maybe two off seasons ago, I coached running backs at University of New Haven where I graduated. And it was cool, you know, like, don't get me wrong, like being a we're division two paid coach, like and it was fun. I had my main homie. Tyler Condit sitting right next to me as the GA and so like we had a lot of fun but ultimately after that year I was like I don't want to coach college ball until like I'm way older yeah yeah that's exactly where I'm just because and even like and I'd always kind of told myself like I wanted to coach in the league and that's still like an idea but man the the thing that kind of throws me away from it is just the 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 time commitment yeah as a coach man yeah. you have no time and I, that's from any level I'm sure now you know I don't know what high school guys are doing now but college and pros like 
there's no days off really. There's no, you know, afternoons off. And it's at this point in my life, like there's still so much more I want to do outside of football with traveling and some other shit that like, I don't want to kind of cement myself down. Yeah. And, um, so like right now I don't see myself wanting to coach a ton. Yeah. But then I feel like as I get older, like, you know, I, I love being able to kind of affect people's lives in small little ways. Yeah, yeah. And I think we talked about this while we were throwing, too, is I would like now kind of my mindset more would be like to just be a like a private QB coach mm-hmm. or like, you know, if I could get involved in the NFL game, be like a combine QB coach where we're going over offenses and reads and terminology yep, and stuff yep. that you're going to get quizzed on at the interviews yep. and stuff like that. Because time frame's a little bit smaller for one. Mm -hmm. And then two, people are excited to come see you. Yeah. You know, even you could be the best coach in the world, head guy in the world, Pete, you know, Pete, Belichick, whoever. Bro, there's still some days, no matter how cool that dude is, you don't want to go see him. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to be around him, Mm -hmm. you know, just because of the nature of the beast. Yeah. And so for me, like, being the I was coaching quarterbacks high school quarterbacks this winter and like they're stoked every day they're coming in yeah running into the yeah, field to yeah, be with me yeah and like then you're able to build this relationship and so for me coaching right now I see it more of like that sector yeah but I also would like the kind of idea of like being a head guy it's, yeah. you know I'd like to see what that's like yeah I agree. I, I'm at the point, too, where I want to be a coach, high school head coach later down the road. Man. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I got things that I want to chase right now. And I got things that I want to prove too outside of the game of like who I am. Right. Um, but at the same time, like you said, man, I've. I've had a lot of coaches in my day, and they've all affected me in a different way. Yeah, some um, good, some bad. Some good, some <laughs> yeah. bad. But the good is, like, I still reflect on those influences today, you right. know? Um, and I want to be that influencer to somebody, you know? And with I've started to do some personal training, too, just uh, specifically in the receiver field. Uh, and, man, like you said, man, those kids, they – they're ready to work yeah. and they they're coming at you with a smile yep. like yo and and the personal relationship that you build with that um is beautiful because sometimes when you're talking a head coach you don't get to get into an athlete's mind on a consistent basis that you can with personal training you know we go for an hour and then you know when the session's done like Hey man, what's going on? Exactly. How how are things going? Like, I don't like when you drop a pass, your head goes down. Right. I don't I don't like that. Let's let's see what we can do to to fix that because you're gonna drop passes. You're not perfect. Blah 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 blah. Um, and that that's important for me because the game is so physical, but people forget how mental it is. Like you said earlier, you have to be smart to play this game, for sure. which means that your mental has to be on point, just like your physical does. And if we're only, if we're only, if I only have the time to put in plays and get pissed off at you when you're not in your playbook, <laughs> like, nah, I'd rather give you studying techniques. I'd rather like, talk to you about how to calm your mind down in heated situations or when coach yells at you, this is how you respond. Like I'd rather dive into that sort of thing um, and affect the kids that way. Now, granted, like I just said, I've had some head coaches and cause coaches in general that have affected me in a very positive way and were really good coaches, you yeah, know? Yeah. So the, the ability to do that as a head coach is there, but I just don't want to be, I don't want to be responsible for all these kids right now. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom line. That too, yeah. <laughs> and and have those kids like those kids determine your bottom dollar yeah, bro you know like man, you, you're yeah. you're responsible to them as much as they're responsible to you yeah, you know and, yeah. and I mean that's a scary thing in my yeah. mind is putting your livelihood in the hands of like 18 to 21 year yeah kids exactly right now. now personal yeah. training yeah. if they you know we can train all day long if they don't get it on the field like yeah. hey we'll get back going next we, year exactly yeah but like you still you you obviously you want to see them improve and they're coming to you to improve but i don't want 
your improvement to be based off of like like my salary or do I say that backwards? Yeah. I don't want my salary to be based off of your improvement. Totally. Yeah. 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 And and that's just being a personal trainer, that's like naturally the path is you're yeah. gonna improve, you know. Yeah, it's like yeah. there's just so many outside thing and yeah. also being uh at New Haven and just being running backs coach, the head coach there was my head coach my senior year. I played in my four years I played, I've played in four different head coaches and four different offenses. That's in my wild. College. That's wild. Um, but me and him, I'm super close with him and his family. And so like, I kind of got a little bit of a extra insight into the, especially division two head coaching world where he's dealing with emails about bullshit, you yeah. know, stuff that a football head coach should not be worrying about yeah. on campus. This professor said that, you know, yeah, little, yeah. those kind of, you gotta seeing, be pops, bro. Seeing that kind of stuff too. I was like, Oh, I'm not ready for yeah. that. Yeah. But um you said something um you said something while we were just talking there about, you know, the mental side of things and then this is also kind of going back to something you said when we were throwing last time about how, you know, your one catch, one of many catches in Seattle, but like the one-hander, yep, you yep. know, you, you'd visualize that yep. and how like so when it happened like it was just whatever, you know, it, it was supposed to happen because you'd already seen it. Right. And so talking about visualization, like kind of give me, because I'm, I'm a big proponent of visual, visualization myself. But as soon as you said that, it got me kind of thinking, you know, I know how I visualize, but like take me through, like what are your kind of like steps of visualization? Do you like when you're saying you had already seen that play in your head and gone over it? you know, multiple times, like, do you, do you have kind of a routine with it or like you doing it before bed or like in the shower, you know, like what? Yeah. Um, I'm just going to take that question and talk about just building, uh, your mental strength in general. Okay, cool. Um, cause the routine involves multiple things, but to, uh, to answer your initial question, I me- I visualize when I meditate okay. and I meditate at the end of every single day. Okay. Um, and in that time my head hits the pillow, uh, shout out to the calm app. I use that app a okay. lot. Have okay. you heard of calm app? I've heard of it. Yeah. I haven't yeah. used it. Though. It's a meditation app. Okay. Guided meditation. I was just, um, that was my next question yeah, too. It was yeah. so good. We're hitting two with one. right yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I, I turn that on. Um, I love listening to the rain, anything about nature. Okay. Uh, I love, I love that sound. Um, and yeah, I, I'm just in my head and I just see the ball hit my hands and I see whatever catch I want to see, um, whether it be the low ball, whether it be the sideline catch, whether it be that one hander back shoulder, um, the one hander back shoulder, I was visualizing a lot just, and it, it, that one just came to me. Mm -hmm. I was training one day and, uh, I was like, man, I just want to do some dope shit. (laughs) And that's the first catch that i thought of so from there that's like that's that the, the one, one of the main things so i visualize every style catch and then at the end of my visualization i'll uh i'll visualize the 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 big one okay. you know that yeah. big one hander or that big game on the line go up and get it type catch like uh and granted this is all recent stuff i didn't start doing this until uh 2014 when okay. i got hurt i tried i knew that i had to elevate my game some way somehow and um, when you broke your leg. Yeah, uh, yeah when I yeah. when I did my foot in 2013, uh, that whole rehab process, I was like, man, I need to I need to take this to the next level. OK, we're not cool. just athletes anymore. Like yeah. we need to take practice more seriously because I got a new coach, too. At the same time, Chris Peterson yep. came in, uh, Sark left. So I'm like, damn, I'm coming off an injury. I get a new coach. Now, I love Peterson to death, like dope coach. I give him all the respect in the world. I love what he's doing with the program now. Uh, but, you know, being in college and you're a senior and you get a new coach, they need to start working in their guys. Hell you know yeah, what I mean? They need to sure. start building their vision of what the program is supposed to look like. And me and Pete were on a cool level, but, you know, that that just kind of plays into it right. naturally. And I respect it. I get yeah. it. Um, and it sucks, I, but yeah, yeah. yeah. But at that point, and at that point, I was like, man, I got to take it to the next level. So I started visualizing. I started meditating more. I took practice way more serious than I used to, like all that stuff. So my routine also, so I do that meditation and I visualize during the meditation. And then I usually give about 10 minutes to visualizing 
Actually, I don't really have a track of time when I right. meditate, okay. so I don't know. But I visualize a good amount. And then the back half, uh, I'm just focused on the breath. I okay. leave, I get all that out of me, and I just focus on my breath. And during that time is usually when I fall asleep. Okay. Um, and I know I do it good when I wake up in the same position that I fell asleep in. Oh, you dang. know what I mean? Like and all night. Yep. Oh shit. Yep. That's okay. when I know I do it good. Okay. Um. So then I get up, and then I uh go brush my teeth and I'm talking to myself in the mirror as I brush my teeth like I got greatness in me okay um I'm the best one out here um today's gonna be a great day uh I'm the source of my own energy just you know building myself up that way just and and it's it's a repetition thing you know I constantly say it the more you say it the more you believe it even if it's not true even if you don't believe it say it regardless say what you want to bring out of uh, yourself bring out of this life you know what I mean what you ask you shall receive um, so that's that's all part of the the mental growth that is required especially when you're trying to take it to the next level man if you want to oh, go yeah. if you're a guy that is a second stringer um, in high school college what doesn't matter NFL or if you're a guy who is a starter but you're not really getting the college looks that you want or the NFL really isn't paying too much attention to you, they're talking about free agent type stuff, um, that's 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 really how it starts. Yeah. It starts there because yeah. you go to sleep and you wake up. Those are the first, things, the first and last things you do every single day. So as you go to sleep, if you start preparing yourself for the next day um, and then you wake up, you're in that present moment. Now you're speaking to yourself for me. I'm speaking to myself in front of the mirror, yep. present for that day. That's the preparation that gets you to practice. And once you're in practice, your intent with every drill that you run, with every route that you run, you're very intentional. And that's the preparation. And then game time is game time. Right. You know what I mean? Game time, you throw everything that you did out the window. <laughs> Throw everything you did out the window. You shut your mind off and you go play. Right. That's that's the process. You do all this preparation, and then when it's time for the game, like literally, just flush all that out, all that all that mental talk, all that out, and just let your spirit take over. Yeah. And you'll see what happens. That's that's cool, man. You literally like hit my. I was gonna say like, <laughs> you know, what a visualization, meditation, morning routine. Like yep. literally, I have that written down right here. <laughs> that's that Wi-Fi connected through man. right there. That's so that, that Wi-Fi, that's bro. Perfect. Because I think you know th- this type of stuff is important, and I like to know. You know, I have my own little kind of morning routine, and I've recently gotten more into meditation, maybe the last year or two, really, and. So it's always intriguing to me, like to know what other people are yeah. doing too, yeah. because you know it's the whole fucking old saying of like, "There's more than one way to skin a cat," you know, and like, and so that's not at all how I do it ri- specifically, you know, like that way. But at the same time, it all has a lot of similarities yeah. amongst those things. Yeah, and I've switched my routine up sometimes, like uh, in actually. 2016, 17, I started doing the post-it notes, putting it on the mirror. Okay, yep and, yep. and what I would do was on one side of the mirror, I'd have all the greats. I'd have okay. on the farthest left side, it'd be the hist- history greats, Chris Carter, Randy okay. Moss, okay. Um, you know, those guys. Yeah. Um, and then t- the next column over would be the greats currently playing. Okay. Um, you know, I had Calvin in there, you yep. know, he's not playing, but you know, the Odells, the Jarvis, Mike Evans, you know, those guys. And then I had uh, my family and who I cared about. Who okay. am I doing this for? Okay. Um, I had them, and then um, what was on the far- and then the uh, the farthest right side would just be just words that I needed to hear yeah. for myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Greatness, compete, yep. effort, um, uh, lifestyle, present. You know what I mean? Like those that sort of thing. So every I've switched up, you know, a couple of times because, you know, you read books, you take in information, you get things from other people. We're all different. Like you just said, like you have a different routine than I do. Uh, But, you know, you pick something up from somebody else that you talk to. You take little things from people and you apply them to yourself and you have to see what works. Like going all the way back to the seminar question, you asked me what was what was the seminar like? And it's like you got to have your own experience. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? You got to You got to do you got to figure out what works best for you. And right. the only way you do that is by actually getting up and trying it and, and figuring out is this for me or is it not for some people? 
they don't some people think that doing all that stuff is is too much and yeah. they just want to play the game you know what i mean yeah. and that works it works for them that's fine but for me i went through an experience where i knew that i had to elevate some way somehow and uh that's my own personal story and that's you know that's how it worked for me that's cool man yeah no it's it's like i said it's interesting to hear people and once we connected last week i knew i was like all right he's he's yeah, in tune. Yeah. Like, from I, our I, first I, conversation i, I can yeah. see it you know i can see it and <laughs> yeah. so i knew like because that you know it, it's like you know i i think that everyone could benefit from meditating you yeah. know like i think but like <laughs> no one wants to be told like hey you should try meditating yeah you yeah, know? Like, yeah, cause yeah no one wants to hear that yeah. if they haven't done it it's like for me and people had told me and with that type of stuff from it's like you got to just find it yourself yep. in in that regard yeah, exactly. um and so like <laughs> no when when you said your story right there is like eerily kind of you said a couple things i can't really remember but very similar my boy that i played with in portugal who was he was on tampa bay practice squad for two years and he like got hurt and was out of the league for a little bit but was like really working to get back in it and he said i'm gonna kind of butcher the story but it's along this line where he would do these insane visualization kind of and he's a big proponent of the the sticky notes all over yeah, as yeah. well but he said he used to really visualize like the team that he was going to get signed you know he right, was unsigned right. you know undrafted but for whatever reason, he said he was always thinking either the Seahawks or the Chargers. Like those were the teams he always like where he would visualize and like really meditate on it. Mm -hmm. And after he's living in Florida at the time and after so call after a while, he eventually got two calls. From the Chargers and, and this, from the Seahawks. Ooh, <laughs> and so, I'm telling you, it's a powerful no, thing it, up it here. Was, it it's was a powerful crazy. thing. Sorry for butchering that story, Colin. You'll have to. I, you, 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 and this I guy would, would love get well, to meet like, this dude, bro. And, uh, and I'll, I'll get him on here eventually for sure. Once we cross paths again, might have to do a, 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 a Zoom, Skype session. Skype, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, as soon as you were saying all that, I was like, dang, like. Yeah, there. You know, obviously there is something to it. Yeah, there's a know? lot of power up here, man. Dude. A lot of power, and uh, man, I, I'm going back to this seminar because we we focused a lot actually. So for me, it was I'm the source and getting out of my head into my heart. You know what I mean? So having those visions is great with a pure heart you know what i mean right with pure intentions um because this thing is a is very powerful too hell yeah you know what i mean and a lot of people when you talk about these guys in the nfl these analysts these uh player personnel guys who are trying to find um who's the best athlete through stats right it's the one thing they can't judge is your heart For they sure. can't they can't put a number on your drive and your passion that comes from here mm -hmm. you know what i mean so yeah. a lot of people like they underestimate the power of the heart as well so yes there is a lot of power here but connect these two Damn. connect these two and you're on to something hell yeah. yeah yeah and there's i this this question was taboo kind of right now but i'm kind of in the hopes of i guess and you've never done psychedelic type stuff or nah, no no nah, no nah, nah. but yeah yeah, yeah. go yeah, let's go and, there and so because the reason i want to bring it up i've i've done acid one time mm. and shrooms one time um and the, in short i kind of i'm gonna tell the full acid story eventually on one of these yeah, but yeah. in short like it was one of the most life-changing experiences of my life yeah. and the whole like when you say like I am the source of my energy or like kind of in a way like I'm a I'm the star you know like in a way I yeah. kind of like relate those two and to kind of summarize why my thing was so life-changing my trip was so life-changing was like ultimately like it made me realize one that I love myself mm -hmm. and like self-love is incredibly important incredibly important two was like I am the star of my life or you know I'm I'm the producer of yeah. everything that's yeah. going to happen you know in main story. character in the story um three that like everything around me is how it should be or like the timing of everything mm -hmm. and like i mean 
I can go back to 15 and, you know, like I got arrested before my junior year of high school, actually. And so I didn't even play my junior year because of like that, basically. Like I was suspended I for I most of that year. I remember hearing Because we were that. 3A, you were 4A. So it was. I remember hearing a little bit of that. Yeah. yeah. And so like, but anyway, I could go back from. I'm just digging myself in a dirt hole right now. <laughs> giving all my We're feeling all my bad stuff out. So easy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, basically, like, if this doesn't, and, I, you know, everyone can relate this to their life, but if this doesn't happen, then that doesn't happen. And if that doesn't happen, I don't meet this person. And if I don't meet this person, then this thing doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that whole, like, yep. cycle of butterfly. things. Like, yeah, butterfly effect, totally. And so my whole trip was I realized those things and then like ultimately like the timing of everything is exactly right yeah whether we can understand it in the present you know moment yeah yeah. sometimes it takes a little while to understand that it is right um and so yeah the the couple things that you just said I was like dang like he hasn't but he has yeah 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 like I have but it's been it's been natural um and that's why I'm so blessed that I was able to link up with Dr. Bob because he was able to make me realize that yeah man you don't have to do those things to figure that out right okay um now i'm not against it because your story and what you realize is the same thing that i realized yeah, yeah. so like we're different you yeah. know what i mean but you're gonna you, as long as you are able to find that out for yourself everything happens for a reason you are the source it, as long as you're able to figure that out for yourself whatever way um then to each his own. Yeah. But it's but it's it's funny because you're saying uh understanding. When I got hurt, the way it happened was so bizarre that I really wanted to figure out why. Okay. Um like I was saying, the draft grades came in the week before, first second round. They had me second best receiver in the Pac-12 behind uh Paul Richardson, uh right under Nelson Aguilar, um and uh who else? Who else? Marquise Lee. Oh, yeah. Uh, we were at Pac-12 was packed at that Dang. time. Um, and I'm like, I forgot how Glor was in the pack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, I was like, yeah, I'm going to the league. <laughs> I'm I'm gone after this year. There ain't no reason. And, 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 and there's no reason for me to come back. Right. There's no reason. As soon as I made that up in my mind, the very next week, what happened? That, no. Yeah, I get hurt. Yeah. So I'm like, damn it. And that's the reason why I was so lost in trying to figure out the understanding mm. um but it'll find you man you ain't don't don't worry about trying to understand things uh and try to figure out like yes everything happens for a reason so based off of that idea yeah why do you need to go figure out the reason for everything yeah it all happens yeah. for a reason so don't find the reason you know what i mean yeah. it's just it'll just come to you yeah. naturally as long as you're continually to progress and grow and you don't just get stuck on the couch doing nothing right. as long as you're traveling doing new things new adventures uh uh exercising the creativity in your head um you're gonna be all right man right. you're gonna be good and that's one thing that i came to realize but i haven't realized it until like i could sit here and say until now you yeah, know yeah. like th- when i left when that thought left my mind of why did that injury happen it was it was more of like actually instead of trying to figure out why just leave that just leave that shit behind you. Yeah. Who cares why? Yeah. Just continue your journey and continue your path. The why doesn't necessarily matter. Now you need to have a why for your purpose and all that stuff. That's sure. a different conversation. Sure. But trying yeah, to different underst- why. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, but trying to understand why negative things have happened to you or why yeah, I'm just gonna say negative things have happened to you. Let 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 life just like progress the way it's supposed to, man. Yeah, and to jump on that is like yeah. <laughs> you're never really in the moment wondering why the good things happen to you. Yeah, you're not. That's, That's why I didn't say it. That's you know, why that, I didn't that, say that it. was perfect. That was perfect, bro. Yeah. I was like, you're never like, damn, why? Why did I just find this twenty dollars? You know, like, <laughs> what was the point of no? You know what like, I mean? Like, like well, you just got the promotion. To, that was supposed to happen. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. The good things always are supposed to happen. And yeah. Then we always wonder why is a bad thing. And yeah. No, that's a, a interesting. And man, this has been per- like. I almost just want to shut up, but you you cover questions I want to ask. All right? And so, like, the one thing I was going to say is I knew I went back, looked up some stats and stuff. And sophomore year, you had a pretty damn good yep, year. Yep. And, like, was there thoughts that go in t- 
to the league after the sophomore year or, or like what was kind of give me give me into your mind like college league like what the yeah. thoughts were yeah like, how uh, that went. I wasn't thinking about leaving sophomore year because I didn't redshirt so uh, you know you got to have three right. years that's right okay yeah you right. got to have you have to have three years and uh sophomore year it was just about it's it's crazy too because I worked the hardest going into junior year. Oh, okay. hardest I ever worked. Um, because that was it, kind of in your yeah, mind. Yeah, in my mind, I wasn't thinking, "Oh, league coming, league coming." Yeah, yeah. But in my mind, it was just like I just had a feeling that this was gonna be that year. Yeah, and it was. Yeah, it uh, was yeah. until I until the injury happened, and I think what it was too is uh, I was just I was just uh, I was tuned into the energy of UW. Uh, Sark had been there. I think it was his fifth year at that point. We had a monster defense. Um, the like two years in a row, we had like four or five dudes go first round. You know, that was Shaq Thompson, uh, True Font, Marcus Peters, Danny oh, Shelton. That's right. We were deep. Dang, we that's were right. really deep. Um, and then the dudes came up after him: Kevin King, Sidney Jones, um, Elijah Qualls. Like we were deep, and uh, our skill positions were on fire too. John Ross had just yep. came in. Jadon Mickens was here. Uh, that he was going to his sophomore year. Uh, I was there. There was and Bishop Sankey. Yeah, I was gonna say running back. Yeah, there's no reason why we shouldn't have been the best team in the uh, in the pack that year. Yeah. No reason. Um, Stanford was balling. Oregon was really balling yeah um but we was like man we compete with these dudes like yeah. why not so i tuned in to all that and it just like it just boosted me in a way where i wanted to finally showcase who i was and take that next dominant step mm -hmm. um and uh be the leader of a team that's going to be the leader of the pack right you know at the pack 12 so i was really working hard that off season um and it had nothing to do with the nfl okay, but yeah as soon as i said i'm gone yeah that's when the injury happened dang like week of damn near it or was like, the week before I, we were, we had just got we had just uh i was talking to my you parents were killing that year yeah, yeah 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 i uh i was doing my thing man and uh i was talking to my parents after the stanford game and i was like yeah man i'm about to be out because i was pissed <sighs> off we lost um, I was pissed off that we lost and I just, I felt like I should be getting the ball more and I was yeah. like, I'm gone. Yeah. I'm gone. And, uh, yeah, man, if anything, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's, that's what it was. I, I, I enjoyed everything that happened in college because in high school, man, it was like, yeah, we're going to win. Yeah, we're the <laughs> best. Too yeah, easy, we're the, yeah. You know what I mean? And then freshman year of, of UW was the same thing. I came in. Wasn't the starter, but, you know, every time I was in there, the ball was thrown my way, yeah. uh, making plays. Everything was smooth. Sophomore year, the same thing. You know what I mean? Not a ton of adversity. Yeah, yeah we was losing some games in college, but who cares? Um, there was not a lot of adversity. So when that happened, it was the first time adversity had really hit in a major way. Um, and I embraced all of that. Okay. I embraced all of that. Wasn't running from the injury wasn't running from the rehab and trying to grow that's when that's where i was saying earlier about my mental just going to a whole nother level with the visualizing and the meditation and all that stuff so um and then when it was time to hit the league that was crazy too because it was almost like i couldn't get over the injury because i was initially supposed to go to cincinnati mm -hmm. i went to cincinnati yeah. yeah i was there for literally like three hours four hours we get off the plane bro you are just like uh, this is i feel like i'm telepathically a asking you questions right wait until you see the list of, yeah, 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 yeah 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 i can't wait, wait till you see, see the list of questions i got you keep going. Uh, i was literally gonna say explain the the nfl not getting drafted because that's a wild ride yeah, man, man that I, people uh, don't understand yeah go check out uh chronicles of case in the first one man okay and yeah that was all of joey evans was doing that was on the film okay and uh I, you know, it's three days, first round, I think first day is one through four, right. rounds one through four, and then it was like five and six, and then they finished with seven on the third day or something like that. Um, expectations weren't that high. You're right. You know, I was coming off of a senior year that was average. I started kicking up in the second half of the season is when I really started to get the groove back, but okay. it was 
I knew that it was not too little too late, but it was I put up enough tape to let teams know that I was back, but there was still that first half of the season that was real iffy. Okay. Um, I had opportunities. I was, you know, dropping some contested balls and stuff. Okay. Okay. Not making the most of it, but anyway, uh, I wasn't really tripping off of where I got drafted at that point uh, or if I got drafted at all. Obviously, I didn't. It hurt, right. but, you know, because you're still optimistic, but it didn't happen. So whatever. Get a couple calls. Seattle calls me. The Seahawks. Uh, since he calls me, who else called me? I, I, did the uh, I can't remember after that. So and to interrupt you, like it's better almost to be undrafted than it is seventh round, yep, right? Just yep, yep. just to yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, because then you have a choice. Yes, if you're drafted in the sixth, seventh round. Actually, I'll say fifth, sixth, seventh round. Um. The the team has a little bit of like, you know, they're leaning towards you more than the free agent guys a little bit because right. they've invested. But, I mean, those guys are silent. signing bonuses are like, you know, they're getting minimum salary like everyone else. Yeah. Uh, and their signing bonuses are like twenty thirty forty thousand 40000 Right. It's, it's, still good. But, but, but to the league. You're expendable. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. We're, that's you're that's still, right off You money. still have to make your <laughs> yeah. job. Yeah. Like, you're, nothing's handed to you. First round, different story. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's starting now. <laughs> you don't have to play at all. You're starting week one. <laughs> so, yeah. So, exactly. Yeah. So, so, like, what was the thought process? Like, why Cincy? Like, what? how did that? Uh, they had the best receiver situation. Okay. Um, yep. They had uh, A.J. Green. Um, Sanu was still oh, yeah. there, I think. Um, and then they had one other uh uh, Marvin Jones. Okay. Oh, there. that's right. Yeah. He was still there as well. So they had three guys. And besides that, I mean, you usually activate five or six. Um, and besides that, it was wide open. Uh, so I'm like, okay, they got their top three. I'll, you know, and as if I'm a free agent, you better be doing some special teams. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, so exactly. I'm like, all right, cool. I, they have the best situation over there. Um, Sign, they wasn't offering the most money as far as signing bonuses go, but that doesn't matter. You want opportunity. So I chose there, and I was like, I'll bust my ass, and I'll just, you know, get my job on special teams, and then, you know, if an injury happens or if somebody gets traded or whatever, that's what, that would be my opportunity. Okay. Um, so we get there, literally, uh, team meeting. We get off the plane, team meeting. Then we go, uh, we eat food, do physicals. I, they had me do an x-ray to check my foot out. And uh, they said there was a broken screw in my oh. foot. Uh, and the doctor is like, I mean, Liz Frank, it is a serious or it's a yeah, it's a serious major injury. Uh, and he was like, man, this guy's not going to be playing for that much long. Like he probably got a year or two and he's oh. going he to be done. So so he went and told the uh, head coach GM that. And from there, he's like, all right, cut him. They didn't even give me a chance. So you never even practice never even practice i sat in on one team meeting they didn't even give me my <laughs> signing bonus bro like they was yeah man what? i was salty oh i was man. real salty and you know to a lot of people that can screw you up because let's go back junior year i was supposed to be first second round right then the place that i ch i didn't get drafted the place that i chose to go to doesn't even want me because they don't think i'm gonna play long and then you hear a medical professional kind of guy yeah. say he's only got a year or two yeah, yeah. so now yeah. i'm like damn man is uh, do i only have a year or two damn. i'm thinking that and then i'm also thinking like damn does nobody want me to play for them <laughs> like what's going on so i'm in the i'm in the uh i'm on the uh in the car going back to the hotel or going back to the airport talking to my agent like what's going on man like any other ops any other ops and then he was like hey C seattle wants you and i was i just like it was one of those things where it was like damn this is meant to be right there's right. no stars aligning there's no like it was i turned them down at first bro. right they yeah. called me and they yeah. was like yo we ain't got a lot of bread we got five racks for you <laughs> um i mean but we also you know ricardo lockett was a uh one of the best special teamers chris matthews coming off of a great super bowl performance jermaine had been there for a while doug was there they drafted tyler that year ah, so there was like okay, four or yeah. five guys that were already locked in yeah so i said nah no 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 i'm cool i'm going this way um, and then Which is like, smart. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And then he's like, Seattle wants you. And I was just like, wow, okay. Um, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> let's do this. Now, at that time, it was only a rookie minicamp tryout. Okay. So rookie minicamp is like, I get to Seattle, and 
at that point, because I wasn't, so there's priority free agents and regular free agents. Priority okay. free agents are the ones that are probably going to go into camp um, and be like, you know, camp bodies is what they say. Um, but I, was, I wasn't I was a priority free agent. Now, if I would have went to Seattle uh, as soon as they called me after the draft, that's priority free agent. You're getting a signing bonus, that sort of thing. Gotcha. So we get to rookie minicamp, and I'm just a tryout basis. You know, rookie minicamp, there's 90 guys there, too. Just for rookie mini camp, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. and they're only bringing maybe twelve to fifteen to camp. Yeah, um, so I go there. It's three days long. Um, I do my thing, uh, fade ball, one handed catch like that, go over the top of the guy, um, and uh, yeah, just making plays. And then they bring me into camp, and uh, during camp uh, was a great experience because. Like we said earlier, Seattle's coming off two Super Bowls. Um, Lob is at the height of yeah. their 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 fame. Yeah, this is like peak Seahawk. Yes, dumb. Yeah. yes, yeah. yes. Like ev- like the the practices were lit. Practice Seahawks practices are always lit, <laughs> yeah. but like this was really lit. Um, and yeah, man, first one on one rep was against Richard Sherman. Yeah, and ooh. Yeah. My heart was pumping, bro. My heart was pumping. I didn't even like it was like, damn, am I even in this moment right now? Like, is this reality? Right. Like, it was one of those weird things. Um, run a comeback and I beat him. Yeah. Uh, and that was like, I could play in this league. Yeah. I, yeah. I deserve to be here. Um, and um, yeah, man, the rest is history. I ended up making the practice squad and I'm there for two and a half, two and a half years. And yeah, but it was just like it was it was weird because I turned them down and when I had the opportunity to be like, yeah, Seahawks, U Dub, Skyline, yeah. like there could have yeah. been a great story here. But I was at the point where I chose U Dub because I wanted to fulfill my dad's footsteps. But I was at the point after that, it was like I'm ready to go off and do my own thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I want to yeah. have my own story and I don't want to just be Seahawk, UW, like Seattle the whole way through. Um, and uh, the universe was like, nah. This is what <laughs> nah. you're doing. You go, this was, this is, you, you started this path and we were, you're going to finish this path. Yeah. So your ass is staying here. <laughs> um, so, man, it was just, it was, the stars aligned, man. It was yeah. really, it was really cool to go from, uh, a very low point when just entering the league, getting denied by Cincinnati, was only there for a couple hours. Right. To then getting an opportunity with Seattle and then slowly just building my way to earn the respect of those guys in the locker room and get the opportunity to play on Sundays, man. Yeah, that's that's sick. That damn that brings me back to a question I did have, and you like segued it perfect, kind of going back to college. Um, you know, and I was always kind of curious why you chose U Dub too, because of like, I mean, you had everybody pretty yeah, much yeah, right like go anywhere yeah four four or five star all yeah. american national all american all the accolade like everything and so that's what i was gonna ask was like you knew it was you dub no matter what pretty much was there a close second what was uh, what, what was the you know where was where yeah what, what was the mindset go back to 18 year old case yeah you know i mean damn that that had to have been a fun time, too. No, I mean, honestly, I'm going to go the opposite. I hated the recruiting process. Really? Bro. Okay. I hated it. Okay. Phone was ringing all the time. Con- okay. Um, every practice, whether it was track football or basketball, there's a recruit there. North Carolina, LSU, Someone Arkansas, talk to you. Notre Dame, somebody, man. And it was – everybody was like – I was grateful for the attention that I was getting yeah. and um, the love – that these colleges gave me on wanting me to get to their program. Um, but every, and everybody else was like, man, this must be so dope. This must be dope. And I was just like, it's cool. But like, nah, man, this is why I don't want to coach college football because when season's over, you go straight into recruiting oh, yeah. and, and you telling a kid a whole bunch of bullshit, right. man, some of it's bullshit, some of it's not, but you're recruiting 50 kids. So you bullshit <laughs> to at least 50 to at least 25, 30 of them. <laughs> you know what For I mean? Real. Like we want you to come in. We want you to play, For blah, real. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I didn't like the recruiting process, uh, but I was never, Never glued into UW. Okay. Um, I UCLA, LSU, Notre Dame. Those were my yep. top three or four, or whatever. And uh, I really, really liked LSU. That's for whatever reason. I mean, this is a good connection. Like, 
I always was thinking he was going to go LSU. Yeah. But I don't know why. Yeah. We weren't even. We didn't. I guess we hung out that summer, maybe. Yep, yep. Shalane Day. Shalane. <laughs> Shout out Dance. Miller. <laughs> oh, me, oh, me. Good looking. Uh, crib, we had a crib lit. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I liked LSU because when you're looking at the receivers at that time, uh, uh, in my class, it was Odell and Jarvis. Those Damn. were the, those were, it was me, Odell, Jarvis, and, um, <laughs> um, I'm blanking on the fourth or fifth, but those two had decided to go to LSU. And that was the only thing that attracted me and stared me away at the same time. Right. I was like, damn, man, you guys, like, we can do this. So they're the same high school class as you. Yep. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. And, uh, we all met. We all met at the uh, Army All American game. Ah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. So when we played LSU, my uh, sophomore year of college, me and Odell was like, "Yeah, what's good, bro?" Oh, like, you okay. know what I mean? We're chopping it up after the game and all that stuff. I never knew that part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool, cool little, cool little connect. And yeah. also to connect it even crazier, uh, me and Jarvis reunited in at, at at Cleveland. Right. And then guess who comes in as soon as I leave? Damn. Oh, damn. So uh, yeah, that hurt my heart a little bit. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie because what could have happened in college, you know what I mean, could have oh. happened in the, on the next level. Uh, but I wouldn't have been in Cleveland anyway because after Cleveland, uh, Seattle had requested a trade uh, for me during free agency. Oh, okay. so I was gonna. I would have been back in Seattle anyway. Gotcha. Uh, I decided not to go come back to Seattle. It, that's a different story. Okay. Um, but anyway, yes, I, I was really attracted to LSU. Uh, I really liked UCLA. Um, yeah, UCLA's campus. Yeah, crazy. it was crazy. <laughs> Females out there going crazy. stupid. <laughs> But uh, they had a good ass quarterback in Brett Hundley. He That's was right. coming in. Uh, me and Brett Hundley actually met at a uh, while we were at UW one time. We we, we were both at a game, um, and yeah, I wasn't committed at that time. We were both at a game, and then we both uh, they had us do a little workout together. Okay, and we was connecting on every ball, just like damn. how you and me yeah, be on the yeah. field. And uh, I was like, damn, this Brett Hundley dude, like. He the truth. I appreciate you just putting me in that conversation. Right there. <laughs> you know I, mean? I, I appreciate that, bro. Got you, yeah. bro. Got you. <laughs> me, hey, me and Joey be out there connecting, <laughs> like yeah. for real. Um, but uh, yeah, and once me and we and uh, Brett had that workout, I was like, yo, we had, you know, as kids, you like, yo, what if we went to the same school, man, right. did this thing for real? So he was heavily considering UW and uh, UCLA. Um, he ended up going there, and I was just like, you know what? In the back of my mind, I was always thinking for Phil Pops, is, you know yep, what I mean, yep. the legacy and what are what's the, what are we here to do and what have I been thinking of since I was a little kid, like, and because of that, it was all right. We're gonna U Dub and okay. Pops play receiver. I play receiver. He were number two. I'm wearing number two. Right. You know what yep. I mean. And that was much bigger than any other connection from any other school. You know. So based off of that. Yeah, it was a no a no brainer, but I didn't decide until my senior year. Okay, so yeah. and there was still some yeah. outside info. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's always just been one I remember. You know, I was in California at the time and just kind of like reading, checking up on everything, and like, where's Casey gonna go? I was like, he could stay at home, but for whatever. But then I didn't even realize it was Jarvis and Odell's year that year too. Yeah, so that, yeah, dude. Yeah, it was, that's it was, a crazy. Yeah, but. LSU didn't really have a quarterback at that time. No, and they didn't really throw it like that. Nah, you know, like exactly. Looking back now. I was kind of looking at them like, why y'all want to go there? Yeah. But, you yeah. know, to That's interesting, up. yeah. No, okay. Well, then kind of – okay, now we're hopping around a little bit, but this still kind of relates and talking about the kind of ups and downs. And, you know, I, you've kind of answered it already a little bit with, like, what's the most adversity we fa you've faced or whatever. But, you know, we tend to – always talk about the accolades and the the positives and yep. the, the, the state championships and this and that and but if you had to kind of go back on reflect on football career or life or whatever like what do you think and this isn't the most fun question to ask or answer but like the lowest point you've been and like what was like do you remember kind of like any like self-talk negative like anything that kind of propelled it mo lower or yeah. and then on the flip side what brought you up out of it you right know? um that was like four questions in one but, uh, <laughs> you know i could just go <laughs> you'll go i know yeah day, so uh 
but I appreciate you setting that up. <laughs> um, I would say a couple things come to mind. Now, this is going to sound like, oh, of course, that's your worst when you had all this dope shit on top of. But that's what a lot of people don't understand. Is yeah, a lot of the yeah, times yeah. when things are on the yeah. surface going the best is when they're going the worst. Yeah, and so that's kind of why. Yeah, yeah. And what I'm saying is, man, losing my senior year in the state game, bro, mm. that shit hurt. Uh, like yeah. hurt hurt you know like bro there was an i'm, I'm already know i know i already know i already know i wasn't gonna go there bro i wasn't gonna go there <laughs> oh man uh yeah man that hurt bro i can yeah uh, no doubt and uh, honestly i'd be interesting i'd be interested to like i wonder what people are gonna how they're gonna view this because yeah. your situation was Issaquah is always right there, yeah, like yeah. always right there. Semifinals, losing a Bothell, yeah. or quarterfinals, losing a Bothell, or getting to the state championship game, whatever. And uh, you guys saw us, and it was a good-ass game. I mean, we played you guys week two, and we blasted y'all 38-0. Yeah. to zero, yeah. But then we come back in the semifinal games, and we win 20-15. to 15. Like, yeah. it yeah. was a very different game, like, totally. completely. Um, and you guys almost had us, bro, like, for real. But in my situation— I still think about it in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> I just get mad. I start pressing the wall. For real, shit. bro. <laughs> if I would have done this, oh, man. bro. Man. Why didn't I tell Galatly to swear? Yeah, if you, t- you know what I mean? hindsight 2020 type yeah. but uh I, but uh my senior year i just i just thought of the legacy and how totally. how crazy it would be that would have been four right yeah, yeah. four it would have been four and uh we had beat ferris the year before in the state championship game okay we beat him my sophomore year before we played y'all we played him in this in the semifinals. that's right you guys yeah. were away we went all the yeah. way down there that's yeah right. and played them and barely beat him uh that was a close one too um so I'm thinking, like, man, we got Ferris, like, yeah. low key, we, we we've got done these this, dudes. Yeah, yeah. But you know, we were down 20, and and the road getting to the state championship game was wild because once again we played a squad in the quarterfinals, and uh, we were down. You guys were beating us at halftime, seven yeah. to fourteen, and we ended up coming back, ended up being forty two to fourteen. Oof. But you know, we was down, and then uh, every game we were down. Then we played C- Curtis the next week, okay. and we were down to them. It was like twenty eight to seven. Came back and beat them. Uh, Ferris, we're down twenty four zero, fourth quarter. Uh, score a touchdown. Go for two. Get it. Stop them. Very next drive. Score a touchdown. Go for two. Get it. Dang. You know what I mean. Sixteen fourteen. We have an op to really like. This is crazy comeback. Like we about to. This story is gonna be wild, and in, at Skyline, like, w- yeah, we had all that success, but we wasn't. We would blow out the bad teams, you know, right. the Redmonds and all that. But we were some close games, bro, right. and we just found a, we just were on the winning side of most of them. Um, but this was another one of those situations where I was like, yeah, this is a close game. This is a crazy comeback. We about to be on the winning side of it, and it just didn't happen, bro. Yeah. And then and that and that really hurt, but. Another one I would say is definitely the injury. Right. That was tough. Um, but it sounds like you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The way yeah. you make it seem is like you were pretty mentally ready, yeah. or you know, you weren't ready. But yeah, I just knew it. I just knew adversity was gonna hit eventually, bro. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm 21 at this point, yeah. and everything's kind of just been smooth. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like. And we can talk about off the field, you know, True, girl yeah. problems, you know, I'm a lover and not, you know, all that <laughs> stuff. But like and not being in relationships and I can we can talk about that for yeah ever too. But uh That's that's part two for sure. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We talk about we won't even touch football. We <laughs> yeah. can still go forever. For real, yeah. Um but yeah, when it came to the injury, I was ready I was ready for that. Okay. I was ready for that. But the second injury when I was in Cleveland, I did my meniscus, smaller injury. Okay. Uh, I I tore my I, I tore my lateral meniscus. It was only a 2-month recovery, but the timing of that, when we're talking about things happening for reasons and I don't even know this one, but um it was the last week of the season. Uh I was they had me on practice squad. We got a new GM. And I was balling on practice squad. Like, I was doing my thing. And the GM was, the new GM was like, yo, I want to see what this dude looks like in a game, you know? I want to see what he looks like in a game. So uh, he comes up to me before practice. He's like, yo, this is, uh, we practice hard Wednesday, Thursday. 
light practice Friday, walk through Saturday, game Sunday. This gotcha. is a this is a Wednesday practice. And um he's like, Yo, I wanna we're gonna activate you this week. And I was like, For sure, bet. Like, that's what I've been waiting for. Yeah, I shouldn't be on practice squad to begin with. Yeah. Like, I don't even know why you got you guys got me here. Yeah. Uh, but it's a new GM, you know, so I'm trying to impress him. And uh that day, went up for a ball. Uh Cle- I mean, Cleveland in December, bro. It's it, we're practicing on a frozen field, oh. like you know when you're walking on cement and cleats and you hear the click clack. Yeah, w- you was hearing that on the fifty. Oh, yeah, and I get a back shoulder. I go up for it, catch it, land on the knee, and just it just snapped, Ugh. and uh, that really upset me because one, like I had alluded to earlier a little bit, um, Seattle had requested a trade for me at the end of the season, so. I was so bitter with Seattle that they cut me to begin with. And I was like, damn, they don't even want me at all. And then here they come at the end of the season, like, uh-huh. yo, we were tripping. We need to get him back here. Yeah. And they were they put in like a fourth or fifth round draft pick for damn. me. So they saw me with value, meaning I was going to come back and play. Yeah. And, you know, I'd rather be in Seattle than Cleveland Hell like, yeah. all day long. Yeah. Um, the injury itself, those are never the the hardest parts. It's the rehab process. Yeah. Man. And because I had to do my rehab in in Cleveland, it was like I was living in a hotel. Uh, Cleveland, it snows from <laughs> November to February. Right. So I'm doing all my rehab. I'm crutching to and from the facility in mm. – well, not to and from the facility, but, you know. You yeah. Know, outside yeah and uh yeah in three feet of snow damn um and you know you get three months off before you have to go back for uh actually four months off before you have to go back for otas okay and for athletes man those four months are extremely important you get away from the game go back home you relax you reflect on the year on life like you and you go and you see the people that you need to see like i wasn't able to do any of that Uh, you know what i mean like i was stuck in 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 cleveland there ain't nothing there yeah so i was just lost And you don't want to be there you're thinking about the trade and Mm -hmm. yeah dang Mm -hmm. so um that part was real tough for me that part was real tough and uh yeah man i i i wasn't I wasn't into my meditation anymore. Yep. I wasn't visualizing anything. Um, I was just, man, lost in the sauce, trying to figure out, once again, like my old injury, trying to figure out why. Wow. But I wasn't ambitious to figure out why. I was soaking figuring out why. Like, damn, man, why did this happen? Bro? Right. Like, this, it was on air. It wasn't even in the game. And once again, timing, I was about to get brought up. Like, for what? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then... Uh, um, yeah, man, I, uh, it was, it was, it was tough, but you know, we are we're still here. We're still standing. So yeah. I can't really give any like motivation from that because the story is still continuing. Yeah. I was, I was really grateful to end up in Indianapolis. It, it, it gave me a tough decision to make because Seattle still wanted me. There was no draft. They, they weren't drafting or trading a draft pick for me or anything because the value wasn't there but uh they had brought me in for a uh for a, a, a physical said everything looked good but they brought brandon marshall on the very next day uh, and i didn't think that this is me doubting myself i didn't think that i would be able to compete with brandon in their eyes gotcha thinking of what they're thinking about gotcha, yeah. i don't know why but I had a decision to make. It was between them and Indianapolis. Uh, my agent is Andrew Luck's agent. Um, okay. There is a there is a recruiter that got a upgrade, um, that got a promotion, but for Indianapolis. So he was in Seattle while I was there, and then he got a promotion, but at Indianapolis. So there's a lot of connects over there. And I was like, man, let's take advantage of these connects. Gotcha. So that was a great experience, too. Uh, yeah. Um, but, you know, and I did my thing there, too. I, I couldn't tell you why I didn't make that squad either. I, I led preseason for for that team Yeah. Um, in receiving and, and catches. But, you know, to, you know things happen. I, I could have played better on special teams if I'm being completely okay, honest yeah. with myself. Um, but, yeah, so uh, that was that was some tough adversity right there. But, you know, it, it, things happen. And w- – when you're in that place, like, were you, I mean, you're conscious now of, like, I wasn't meditating, I wasn't, like, were you conscious of that in the time, yep. like, I know this is going to help yep. me, 
but I'm still not doing it. Yep. And then that kind of compounds it. Yeah, yep. Okay. I knew exactly what I should have been doing. For sure. Um, but, you know, when you're when you've been doing it for what was that? That was 2018. I had been doing it for three years consistently. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I was on practice squad like that, that camp uh, 2015, my freshman year best ball i've ever played right. um soft those all those times in seattle was the best ball i ever played yeah so i'm seeing it come to fruition but i'm just like i i i gotta take that next step and and do it 16 games regular season you know yeah, what i yeah. mean I'm, I'm sick of doing it on practice squad i'm sick of doing it in preseason games you know so i'm seeing it work i know it works i know my routine works but it hasn't fully came to life yet yeah and that's the outside sources that I can't control. I can't control why Seattle cut me. Yeah. You know what I mean? That has nothing to do with me. But I was ready. Yeah. I was, I was, my routine, I was ready. I, I performed the way I was supposed to, you know? So. Why, why, why do you think they cut you? Like, what's um, your, I mean, cause like, like I, I said earlier, that preseason, I can remember either talking to my dad or watching it with my dad and being like, Kaysen's on the Hawks, bro. Like, yeah. that's just yeah, fact. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, yeah, that's yeah. how I was thinking. I know a lot. And yeah. you had to be thinking I, it too, I, man. Our Wi Fi was connected. Bro, I was thinking the same thing. Well, I had, after our throw in session, other, I had to go look up the, the all the highlight. I mean, bro, your highlight tape from those three preseason games, four preseason yeah. games, is better than dudes who are playing yeah. every day yeah. or yeah. every weekend right now. Yeah. You know, and great. Preseason. There's still it's still yeah, the league. It's you know? still the and league, so, and mean, a couple of those catches were Xavier Rose, who's yeah, a Pro Bowler. So and, you're, and it couldn't, it didn't matter who it was. I mean, when you're going up and doing that on guys, and you know, yeah. So, but I mean, what in your is still kind of a a doubt, or I mean, like what uh, the reason why they cut me? Yeah, uh, it's not for me to understand, yeah. bro. You just kind of really put that off, like, you know yeah, what I mean, like. Even, I can try to wrap my head around it, but for what? Yeah. I can try to wrap my head around why before that they traded Jermaine. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking fourth preseason game, Jermaine gone? Yeah. Oh, so they want me to come in and be number three. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be me, Doug, and Tyler. Yeah. I started I started two of those games. Yeah. You know what I mean? At X, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So right. so what what are we doing? Damn. But that's not for me, that's not for me to figure out. Because I'm sure. not gonna try to put my put my mindset or my I'm not gonna try to think about what they're thinking about. Yeah, we wasting yeah. time for sure. Um, they obviously knew that what they did was a mistake because they tried to get me as soon as the year ended. Yeah, you know, so I can't I can't figure that out for them. Only they can do that. And no. sometimes they don't make the best decisions. They're not perfect. No, you know what I mean. No. Sometimes they may they may, they may be feeling a certain way, um, but it doesn't end up you know working out. So yeah. you know it, whatever. And I'll I be mean, back. <laughs> I got a year at XFL, and uh, I'm about to be right back. I believe Trust. it, bro. I believe it. Yeah, I mean, that's actually, I guess, we've been talking so much. It's like I, So much history. Yeah, so much what history. What the future look like. But that's good. And so, yeah, maybe let, let's do that kind of like yeah. go into the, the present and the now and the future. I meant to say it in the in the intro that you're getting ready for the XFL draft, which is, what, this next month, I believe. Yeah, yeah mid, ex- and, mid-October. Um, yeah, so kind of what's the – Give me the 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 latest update yeah, right now yeah. for Kaysen. Uh, so the future looks like XFL. Okay. Um, you know I'll probably end up playing in Seattle. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the I mean they the draft is the draft. Right. Um, you know with these startup leagues, most of them they try to get the guys that are in the areas where there's going to be the team. Yeah. Because that's where they're most known. You know, like all the UW guys with the. Uh, I know you know about the AAF. Yeah. That was yeah. that had started last year. Lasted a couple weeks. <laughs> uh, but uh, the Se- the San Diego team wanted my rights or had my rights. Okay. Um, and that was basically all Pac-12. Like you have Mike ah, Bercovici, who okay. was the ASU quarterback when I was in school. Bishop was on that team. Travis Feeney, Tony Tony Totopo. Like there was there was a lot of guys who. Um, I were, who are on my team and I play with. So that's how they try to that's how they try to form it with these leagues, but this XFL is going to be a true draft. Um but the uh Seattle team, uh, you know, Zorn, Jim Zorn is going to be head yeah. coach. He really likes me. Um and we'll we'll see what's up with that, but uh yeah, that's the that's why we connected to begin with is, I know. is I'm preparing for that and I'm real excited for that opportunity because I feel like I need just a year take that's really sure, what yeah. I need. You know, I'm 26, still young, still got a lot more game to play. Um, but I just need one solid year of tape where the where the league can say, 
okay, this guy is he's ready. He's he's off of his injuries. He's the guy that we always knew that he was. He right. just put it on film for us. So now we can we can bring him back. And you know, if that doesn't happen, you know, I'm still playing in the XFL. Yeah. So yeah, I yeah. don't really I don't really care. I've kind of I've kind of um, yes, I want it to happen, but I've let the expectations go. Going gotcha. back to gotcha. making our conversation go full yeah. circle, uh, eliminating expectations and just letting everything just flow naturally. Um, so I don't really care where I end up. I think it's going to be Seattle, and I don't really care how long I play in the XFL, but I hope that it's one year. One year you know what I mean? To, and yeah, back up. But I'm likewise. completely content with just just playing the game, man. Just just having fun and loving what I'm doing. And that's that's really what it comes down to, regardless of where it is, who it's with, what what uh profession it is, like uh or levels in that profession. Like regardless of all that stuff, man, I just want to play the game and have fun. Word. Yeah, no, I I feel that. Yes, and kinda getting you know, I I I remember when I first when we got back connected again and I was scrolling through the Instagram and saw the, I mean, what, what do you call it? Are you rapping technically or cause uh, the thing on the is IG is like poetry, poetry, yeah, yeah, but I mean poetry. the flow of it <laughs> is good. Yeah, right? yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? And yeah. so like, uh, I mean, obviously we've talked about your, your interest in music mm-hmm. and kind of, what's 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 that avenue feel like for you right um now? there's no destination in yeah. mind you know like that's just like the thing that just came to my mind is just like a road trip and no destination okay. bro. like i just love doing it and um i'm just gonna put it out there because i think i got some skill yeah man and uh whatever happens happens but i don't necessarily see myself becoming some big rock rap star like, okay i yeah. don't see myself doing that i honestly don't even see myself like being the guy that's consistently putting out albums like i really just want to perform it how i did in that video yeah uh, in front of live crowds um that I, video is on his instagram yeah yeah like, yeah go what, check it out k will 2 k will 2k scroll down a couple like a couple posts you'll see it you'll it's see sick. it it's dope. Yeah. um so yeah i don't really have a destination with it it's just something that i enjoy doing um but i'm not gonna turn down if you know if i get a call <laughs> and someone's like yo I'm a representative yeah. of, of <laughs> Rockefeller Records or some or Def Jam Records, you know what I mean? I'm a, yeah. I, I may jump at that opportunity, but at the same time, man, I just love doing it, man. Okay, that's, cool. I've always been a writer. Uh, <laughs> and th- that's cool, bro. I I, uh, I hate to kind of cut this short because I think we could go all day. Yeah, yeah. Part two coming soon. Yeah, man. part two is definitely coming soon. Um, but man, I really appreciate you being here. Yeah, uh, we got to keep doing this because yeah. i think it's beneficial for both of us i'm excited to see what the future has for both of us yep and uh I thanks mean, for having me man i really appreciate it it's my first time doing like long podcast interview type and i'm enjoying myself bro man. this was great yeah. no the the appreciation is mutual bro yeah so yeah. appreciate you bro. much love and until next time yeah <laughs> perfect it went off right as- ah, let's go bro let's go